Dear ones. I am Archangel Michael. Let's start another week. And this week we will begin a new journey. Let's do some meditations, some propositions on the path. But I ask each one of you to do what is in your heart. Nobody is obligated to do anything. Just, let's work this week, and possibly the next, on the energetic balance of each of you. I have already explained here that each soul aims to evolve. Each soul aims to rise between dimensions and become light, a being of pure light. As the soul evolves, it loses its physical clothing. She now has a subtle look. It may still have a form, but not the form you know, this strictly carbon body that you have. It's another outfit, which doesn't need anything more than you need today. Just stay light. Each soul is not born indiscriminately, it is born within a plan, within a proposition from our Father or Mother God. No, don't understand this as Father or Mother God spends his or her day thinking about how many souls he is going to create. It's not that. All functions of the universe are divided. Each one takes care of a quadrant, each one takes care of a session, each one takes care of a galaxy, each one takes care of a planet, and so on. Each one has their role, and it is the responsibility of those who govern the planets or orbs, the creation of souls, the planning of the creation of souls. Souls are not created all at the same time. Its astronomers subdivided its skies into twelve constellations, thus generating the signs that you know. Within this concept, the calendar you have was created, explaining the rotation of your planet, the phases of the moon, the signs, and the months. Then you found yourself divided into a timeline, where the smallest particle is the second and its subdivisions. You can already count the milliseconds. Very good. Then each soul is created according to the position of the planet, in relation to that constellation. So, that's why souls each incarnate on a different day. So there we have two concepts, we have the creation of the soul and we have the relationship of that incarnation of the soul, with the timeline. I'm not going to talk about astrology here, because nothing you understand about astrology is real. This was all created. I'm not going to say that the position of the planet on the day of the soul's incarnation of course has an influence, but not in the way it is put to you. If everyone with the same sign had to follow the same route, on the same day, it would be quite strange, wouldn't it? Yes, in the stars there are many answers. For those who do what you call an astral map, there are answers there. Now not the astrology that you know every day. This is absurd. This doesn't exist. But I'm not going to talk about astrology here. The focus here is the creation of the soul. I have already told you that there are seven rays. We already talked about this. I have already commented on the rays that make up the rainbow. I have already spoken here about each master, who would be tied to those rays. But you have to understand that within the universe there are several types of rays. I have the planetary ray, I have the universe ray, I have several types of rays. So when I commented last time, many people thought I was crazy. Because it was nothing like what they had learned. Those rays that I taught you are a type of the rays of this planet. So now we're going to walk through the, so to speak, most important rays on the planet. It's like lightning on lightning. These rays are made up of seven rays. Each one governed by a pair of Elohim, ascended masters, also in pairs, and archangels. We will not go into the details of archangels here again. You will see that I will be in the blue ray, like an archangel. It doesn't matter what name they give me. May this already be clear in your mind. I will continue to be an archangel until the end, nothing will change. You already know the truth. So ready. So every day this week, not today, you will be taken to walk by lightning. What's the point of this? Many of you do some research, and discover yourself, on that OR that other ray. What is the word lightning? 
here we need to take away the geometric concept that you have. They are not concentric spokes. It's radius, because the word radius can mean a lot of things, like a ray that falls from the sky, for example, like a geometric measurement. So we call rays, the division of colors between them. So let's go. Let me try to explain it to you, this association of lightning with your souls depends strictly on the master. Some masters are well known within each ray. They are the ones who command that lightning. And then you will hear about many ascended masters, who are not linked to any ray. So how is it? What the hell do you belong to? Then you notice that certain concepts, which were presented some time ago, begin to fall apart. It's as if the deepest truth begins to emerge. So there is no such delimitation, that each of you can only belong to one of the seven rays. And the other masters, where the hell are they? Nobody talks. Stop to think. That's what I always say here, we are each in a radius, and we are in everyone. There is no specific delimitation that you understand, like a line dividing one radius from another, and no one can set a foot outside its radius. This does not exist for us. We are all capable of traveling through all rays. Just a few, let's say that are more specific to that radius. But everyone can be in everyone. Then you can make your date of birth calculations if you discover yourself in one radius and your master is from another. So what are you going to do? Ah, so this is not my master. Then everything is wrong. This is how you think, you think inside boxes. It comes out of the box and is wrong. So I remember one important thing again, the master is not linked to your incarnation, the master is linked to the soul. So you may, by coincidence, fall within your master's radius, or you may not. And is everything wrong? No, it's not. Your concepts of delimitation are wrong. You may or may not coincide with the birth date of your incarnation in this era, at this moment. So when being created, that soul is assigned a master. There is no master for each incarnation. The spiritual master is of the soul, not of the physical body. Those who care for this physical body here are your spiritual guides, not your masters. So my brothers, don't try to close, try to close with the master you have. And how is the master attributed to that soul? I've already talked superficially about this here. It depends on what that soul was created for, because there are souls with specific functions. They are those souls that contain an additional ingredient for the evolution of the universe. They are wise souls, souls who have been prepared for wisdom, to teach, to pass on knowledge since childhood. There is a concept that you can imagine yourself, the ascended masters themselves. They were all incarnated on the planet and at that moment, in that incarnation before they ascended, were they someone's masters? They were, because they already had fractals up there, that was just one incarnation of them. And the others, and the other fractals, that were already evolving and were already up there? Exactly what will happen to most of you now who will ascend? You already have fractals in higher dimensions. So your master is not the one incarnated here. It is the one who is up there, he is your master, because he has already ascended. He is already in higher dimensions. Very good. Now, don't try to understand with this how masters are subdivided in relation to souls. Ah, master so and so takes such and such soul, master so and so takes such and such soul. No 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 no. It's not like this. It's not like this. Let's just put it this way, no one is more powerful than anyone else, no ascended master who has ever been incarnated is more powerful than another. Everyone has the same ability, everyone. And they all act within their specific rays, as in the others. Very good. I will give my example, I am not an ascended master, I have never incarnated and I will never incarnate. And I am master of many souls. 
why? I can explain this case, each soul of which I am master has an important mission in the universe. They were souls created for this purpose, with the purpose of making a difference, of acting within its mission. Each one has a mission. So they would be very easy souls to fight. So it's as if the protection had to be a little bigger. Not that the other ascended masters don't protect souls, they do. But there are levels and levels of protection. So all of you, who know that I am your master, rest assured, your souls are extremely well known in the universe. Their names are already known. Exactly because of this, you suffer a lot, a lot of attacks, because they are souls who come with missions to change the world. To mess with certain concepts, which become obsolete over time. So they are persecuted souls, they are souls who are extremely attacked all the time. So they need a protective device, a little bigger. And then they are assigned to me. Understand my brothers, every soul that has an important mission to fulfill will do so if they want. Free will is always respected. If a soul that I am a master says to me, I don't want to carry out any mission, I just want to evolve. Very well, this is what you will have, you are not obligated to anything. I just say that your soul was created with this objective, and one day you will no longer be able to say no, because this is your soul's path. Here you have free will and it is respected, but in higher dimensions this ceases to exist, because you don't have that feeling of fear, not to take on the mission. Because this is pure fear and then you will do it. So we calmly accept your no, and respect it. 